Vancouver took care of business in a big way. Sorry, can I say business? I said business. I just said business. Did you really? I did. That's awesome. I said business. I think that's what you should say from now on. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to This Week in MLS, presented by Target. Kalen, four teams remain. We got four left. Just like we drew it up. Just like we drew it up. Our, our bracket's perfect, all right? Said nobody ever. Um, oh, my gosh. So in the East, it is down to Toronto. No surprise there. And the Columbus crew, the team of destiny that I keep calling them. And out West, we have got the Seattle Sounders, also who we predicted. The Houston Dynamo? What? Let's go. The Houston Dynamo? This H-Town. is crazy. I don't think that I don't think that this is, as you said, how people kind of drew it up, but this is the playoffs. Anything can happen. So Good we're, year for Houston sports. We're gonna Yes, exactly. It's going well, right? It is. Keep it it going. is. Keep Good it for going. Houston. Okay, so let's get right into our uh, twim takeaway, shall we? Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I was at the NYCFC crew game last night. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the crew because I spoke to Greg Berhalter before this game, and he talked about coming out aggressive, the importance of not really changing their game plan, sticking to what works. And it didn't really go to plan at all. They didn't play great. And after the game, you know, Zach Steffen spoke about it. I spoke to Josh Williams about it. They they kind of, you know, allowed themselves. They were sort of on their, their back heels most of the game, but still were able to get the result that they needed. And for me, in the playoffs, that's all you can ask for at some points, you know, especially in these two leg series. So even when you're not playing your best, to be able to hang on, still get that result, I think bodes really, really well. And even though they lost that game, there was still that, that sort of air of confidence that I've seen the last few times I've watched them play. Um, and I just, again, I, they're gonna face off against this Toronto team. I do think that this is gonna be so interesting because it does, as I mentioned earlier, I think there's like this like team of destiny feel about this yeah. team. Yeah, no, it's happening. It's definitely happening. Harrison Offal, his goal ended up being the decisive one, the yes. fourth goal in that first leg. But you gotta give NYCFC a lot of credit. They came out, they needed to play a near perfect game to get it done and started off well, first 15 minutes, get a goal from David Villa, then they get the second. They had 40 minutes, though, Susanna, to get the third, I to know. get them across the I line. Know. I think you're right, though. Give Columbus Crew SC credit. I thought the change from um, Burhalter to bring in Abubakar mm-hmm. did really well for them, helped them shore up the back line. Mm-hmm. And NYCFC was in a much better position. I, I saw Taylor Twelman giving uh, Vieira a lot of credit for putting in Madarita and Struna. They gave yeah. a much more advanced uh, position for their team and it showed a big difference on the day but just not enough it to get really it done. It really did and I think that there were definitely takeaways for NYCFC in this one. Um, I spoke to Rodney Wallace after the game and obviously massively disappointed you know but I think that you know there's growth you know there's been growth this year I think that they put up a solid performance in this game and so hopefully this is just a, a way that they can continue to ride. Anyway, yeah, yay Columbus, good for Columbus. Here you go. Um, your twim takeaway, sir. Mine's going to be Houston Dynamo. I think no one expected this team <laughs> to be in the playoffs. Haven't made it since 2013. Didn't expect them to get past the first round, potentially even a lot of upset picks over uh, Sporting Kansas City. And then nobody mm-hmm. thought they could go in to Portland, a place where I think they've only lost twice I, this year. Yes. 11 wins, 11 two losses. 11 wins. They, needed a, they just needed a win. They've done it 11 times. Houston, only one road win all season. So the math does not <laughs> it add up. It doesn't add up. But that's what the Dynamo have done well. Uh, Wilmer Cabrera, to me, has been uh, such an underrated coach this year. Mm-hmm. Only one, ye- one week they fell below the playoff line. And it was the depth that was decisive in yeah. this one. Joe Willis steps in for the suspended Tyler Derrick. Fantastic play. Big save early in this match to get some confidence going. Dylan Remick. Mm-hmm. Oh, Dylan Remick. That guy. What a goal. I mean, like, just, it's, uh, I loved, do you know what I loved? I loved his celebration, too. Like, I got this. Yeah. Like, I, I Pop came the chest out. Of course kid. I'm going yeah. to score this goal. But he didn't even so know great. he was starting until the day of this match. Yeah. Marcus Beasley had to be a late scratch in this one. And he gives up the early goal, uh, slips on defending to mm-hmm. allow Portland to get on the board early, but then comes back with the right foot. He's a lefty. 
out of Brown University. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, but that's one of the things that has impressed me about this team. 35 different lineups in their last 36 games. Yes. It's a total team performance. And there's nothing to me that says that Houston Dynamo can't get to MLS Cup. What's there to say? After, after going into Portland, why can't they do it against Exactly. Seattle? Absolutely. All right, Kaylin. Well, probably the, uh, the meatiest storyline of Sunday was up in Toronto, where the Red Bulls, uh, where they're playing leg two of this series, semifinal matchup. Um, the Red Bulls, the Red Bulls get, get the goal. They get 1-0. They end up losing this one on a 2-2 aggregate. So Toronto advances. But again, the big storyline was the, the, the scuffle, the skirmish, if you will, between Josie Altidore and Sasha Kleschen, both handed red cards at halftime after uh, they got into it a little bit. It started out on the field and then trickled into the tunnel. Um, one of the referees saw something go down. Nobody really knows exactly what happened, but it was enough that both now have... Did you see some card. of the fan footage from the tunnel of the both teams getting yes. at it? Both managers were in. Yes. In it. When the managers are getting involved, you know that it's you know like there's some serious beef happening. What, what was your thoughts on the whole? Uh, that the it started with Adams and yes, Javinko I saw. So, and so I saw you there. know, and Tyler Adams is a young guy. You know, I totally understand. You know, coming to bat for your boy, right? You know, like I, I completely understand it. And this is the playoffs. Like obviously, like tensions are high, emotions are high. Um, the thing, the the one incident that really sort of like made me go like this was when I saw Question sort of push Josie and Josie sort of fall fall backward, maybe a little little bit of acting going on there. I mean, Josie, big dude. I think it takes a, a little more than just a, a right. shove. And I was like, ooh, there is some there's some bad blood here. And I don't know, I don't know if this, you know, I'm speculating here. I don't know if this trickles down to like, you know, maybe some U.S. men's national team stuff. I don't know where this all sort of comes from, but there was, I, you felt it, obviously it continued. And, um, you know, now there's serious implications for Toronto heading into the conference championships because out the door is not going to be available for leg one, and that's a big blow. That's only the first part of the story, yeah. too. Sebastian Trevinko also gets thrown out. Uh, well, he didn't get thrown out of the match, but he, he's going to miss the next leg mm -hmm. um, due to yellow card accumulation. Gets one for descent in this mm -hmm. one. He had one for time wasting in the first leg, so they're going to be without those, too. Uh -huh. It started in with Adams. Trevinko gives him a kick. A uh, pretty good one. So I didn't have a problem with Tyler Adams stepping up and standing up for himself. Then Josie and him gets into it. Josie tells him, hey, young buck, that's Trevinko. You uh -huh. should probably, you know, respect, respect. a little bit. But uh, then Sasha, it just escalated from there. It didn't need to. And it hurt Toronto FC the most. Absolutely. Now, I know they both played a man down the second half, but the Red Bulls had the better of the opportunities mm -hmm. and a really good look. BWP has a good chance uh, in the second mm -hmm. half to push them past Toronto FC. Yeah. Toronto FC had this game under control. Red Bulls zero shots in the first half. It was going to be a controlled, disciplined performance from Toronto. Mm -hmm. They got in their own way in this one, and Emotions now uh, are now in a bit of a hole towards the I, next So I was series. I was talking to Josh Williams after the game um, of the crew, and and I told him that Javinko and Josie were going to be out. I loved his reaction. I think he said like, he "Oh, like, really bummed about." He's that. Like, yeah, I know exactly. I, <laughs> I was mean, pulling for those guys. He was yeah. really pulling for those guys, and it was just like it was one of these moments where you know, like the crew now, like as if they needed more reason to believe in themselves. Suddenly, they're like, "Well." Well, heck, we got like two of their star players not even available in the first leg. I don't know. How do you think this is going to affect this this first game between them? I know Toronto FC is going to be the prohibitive favorites, have been throughout the entire season and the playoffs. I don't think you can change that. But you have to think Columbus Crew SC at home without Josie or Javinko, <laughs> mm -hmm. they can maybe get a nice lead in this first match. I know Ricketts is going to come in. They'll probably defend and counter. But I think this Columbus Crew SC team is giving themselves a, a really good mm -hmm. chance here to get through. Uh, they have the formula. They just now know that they can't go sit back in the second leg because yep. they almost lost to NYCFC. Exactly. So they're learning. They're taking taking things away. I, I, mean, I don't is... think Burhalter is going to uh, miss much no, in this one. he's not. So. He's a smart guy. That guy's yeah. smart. He knows what he's doing. Crew SC. Crew SC. How cool would it be if they hosted I love it. I love it. I love it. That'd I think this wild. is so great. I'm so into the storyline. Yeah. Um, okay, so our last matchup that we're going to talk about is the Cascadia battle between Seattle and Vancouver. This one was out in Seattle. Um, the first leg was not, not a very uh, scintillating match, shall we say. It was a nil-nil draw. Um, and so we were hoping for some goals in this one. 
we got them. And I just want to give myself a little bit of props here because I correctly predicted not only the score of this game, but also that Clint Dempsey would score. So, you know, thank How you. How did so you know too. that? I don't know. I'm just like an oracle, Caitlin. Really? Can you an tell oracle. Does this work for other things? Can you help me? Unfortunately <laughs> not. Okay. Sadly, right. sadly not, because okay. that would be so helpful in my daily life. Um, <laughs> I just happened to get really lucky on this okay. one. It was, I think Bobby Boswell and uh, Gordo were super impressed. So. I give you, you know, thank you. respect. Thank you. Anyway, um, Seattle, uh, once again, kind of doing, I, I just, you just had the feeling that Deuce was going to come through in this one. And this is a team, they've had so much success in the playoffs before. They know how to win. I think Schmetzer, Schmetzer knows exactly what his team is. He knows their identity. Um, and he knows exactly who to put out there. And so I just, I don't know, I feel like they're, they're going to, it's going to be a fun matchup with Houston um, in the same way that, you know, sort of like they're riding this sort of team of destiny thing right now too. Um, but I, I think Seattle is going to be, I feel like this is going to be a harder matchup for Houston. Well, Seattle's better than they were last yeah. year. You know, they have Clint Dempsey back and I know, know Jordan Morris, but Christian Roldan is a year improved. Uh, of course, their defense is not talked about as much as it should be, yeah. but Stephen Fry and those two center backs have really locked things down. I don't even remember the last time they gave up a goal. Uh, this, this team is, is built for this, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee you anything. Right. And Houston is the type of team that you can tell can defend and counter. Um, so that's the type of team that can hurt you mm -hmm. in the playoffs, particularly on the road. Away goals we've seen be a big factor. They were decisive um, in the yeah. Toronto FC series. Yes. So I, I think this game is up for grabs, but I, Seattle has to be the favorites, defending champs sure. for a reason. Uh, Schmetzer has done a fantastic job with this group. and um, But, hey, the underdog role suits the Dynamo well. They've been there before. I know. I love how these teams embrace that. It's fun to watch. Well, you could have. It makes it juicy you, you and have, interesting, You guys. can either have this, you know, rematch of last year's MLS Cup. Yep. Or you could have or, this complete wild card. Or Columbus two teams that nobody probably really saw coming. Or some kind of weird mashup of it all. Who knows? A hybrid. You just what do we know? Our brackets, our brackets trash. Yeah. Let's be honest. We know nothing. Um, guys, it is. It's time for our favorite part of the show, my favorite part of the show. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. almost forgot about yeah. it. I did it. Boom! Hey. Here's my Simon. Um, okay, so my did you see that? What's that? Has nothing to do with uh, with the playoffs. <laughs> okay. Just gonna, I'm going to pivot. Where are we going here? I'm going to pivot a little right here. Um, you know, in, that word, in, pivot. Pivot. That's like a business. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's good like business it. jargon. Right. Well, lingo. I'm ready for that. Uh, okay. So, end of an era. We've we've talked about like saying goodbye to Kaká. Are we gonna have to play the sad music we again might. for you? We might because Kyle Beckerman's dreads are no longer. Yes. Did you see this picture, you guys? He cut his darn hair. Like wow. I don't even know. Look I at don't, that. This was. I, we saw this. Tommy Mack did this earlier in the season. He looks like I a homegrown still, kid. Yes. I was like, look at that. He's got like a little baby face. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Like, you're just so distracted by the dreads. But, <laughs> you know, I like, when when Tommy Mack did it, I was like, oh man, I don't know if I was ready for this. He this looked one, like he got a new job. This one just, like, knocked me sideways. Would you I don't say even, it's uh, business casual? I'm it definitely business cash. Yeah. Totally business. He's got it kind of like, you know, the short on the sides too. It's like a little hipstery. I like it. I like it. I don't know. I, so I'm still, I'm getting used to it. I don't know how I feel about it yet, but um, it was definitely shocking. And that is my, did you see that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Did you see that? Did you see that? Uh, I want to stay away from the drama, but it feels so good. I wanted to like, uh, talk you about feed it. off it. Yeah, no, it's fun. The tweet, Josie, I think it's since been deleted. But, he did delete um, it. We, <laughs> we screenshot it, yeah. you know, where he's he's talking about, uh, you know, stop snitching. Stop snitching. I wanted to tell you that a couple times in my day, you know? Me? I don't snitch. I was late to my desk. Uh, I, I cover for you all the time. Yeah, there was that. And then it was just kind of weird scenes, all the old footage. Of, it looked like they were at the club, like it was like a club <laughs> fight going on in Toronto. <laughs> uh, so it was. Listen, you know what? Wild day. A little little drama. We like it. You yeah. know, like let's just add let's add to the spiciness of this playoff run. This Josie was at the uh, the basketball game later in the in the night. Mm -hmm. and, you know, looking cool, sweet. I mean, to, hey, you know, no no sweat. Put it in the past. It's no all sweat. in the past. And yeah. now they've got like a nice little two week break to just kind of let let temper simmer down a little bit. It's all yeah. gonna be good. We're ready for it. Yeah. What are we going to do? 
What are we going to talk about for the next two weeks? I don't know. We got <laughs> we got we got some time to kill. But. Guys, help us out. Tell us what you want to hear. Um, I think that's it for us. That's, that's it. it. That's yeah. all we did. Yeah. I think we knocked this one out of the park. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Get in those comments. Help us out. Tell us what we should talk about for the next two weeks because we're going to need some ideas. Seriously. Um, Click subscribe, like, all that stuff. Rewatch episodes of the movement in BTW if you get a little if you get a little bored because it's, a nice it's quality, quality content right there. You guys, thank you so much. We'll see you soon.